Hello gamers and welcome back to my show. As you may be able to see, I have somehow been sucked into an alternate parallel dimension. Or possibly just a parallel or alternate dimension. The jury is still out. As for why, it's because of that plot stuff that happened last episode. Don't you remember? Weren't you there? Go back and watch it. You're free to. You're welcome to. I suppose I'll forgive you for not watching it in the first place, but that's all right. You had two weeks, but no, that's fine. Now, as near as I can tell, I've been sucked into the Eberron dimension. For those who don't know, Eberron is a constructed world of D&D, Dungeons & Dragons, that takes something of a different approach. It was created in 2004 by Keith Baker, and it's more of a noir setting, a lot of pulp fiction in it. So you have things like elves and wizards and dragons and stuff, but also convenience stores, detectives, police, etc. And it takes a very, very unusual stab at it. Now, there are three main types of elves, just as there are in the main universe. Of course, by the main universe, I mean the original Greyhawk and Forgotten Realms. Now, in those, there are the Dark Elves, or Drow, the best, the Wood Elves, or the Hippies, and the High Elves, or the Bigots. I'll work on that. In this, they are split into the Velinar, the Iron and the Drow. Also, there's elves that live on the main continent, but they're basically humans with pointy ears. Originally, most elves were slaves of the giants, but they broke off into different diverse, you know, groups. Now, the Aaron, El the Aer Aaron, Aranel elves worship their ancestors, similar to the Myrrh of the Elder Scrolls. However, the ancestors are kept alive as sort of good liches. This is a something used in other D and D settings where long-dead elves are kept alive through necromantic magic is something called a Baelnorn. This is also something that originates from Tolkien, with Glorfindel being a resurrected elven hero from a couple thousand years ago who shows up to not appear in a movie after saving Gondolin, or, well, I suppose that didn't go that well. Let's give more examples. Now, first we must talk about the orcs before we talk about another type of elf, the Valinar. They are one of my favorite examples of any world-building ever, and that's speaking both as Alfred and Hirath. Whoa, bricking character? Who knows what could happen? Universe is folding in on itself. Time warps, remember? Anyway, as I say, the thing that really interests me about it is that it's very simple. The orcs in Eberron are druidic, kind, peaceful, and the elves, the Velinar specifically, are marauders, barbarians, aggressive, and conquering. They swapped the hats, if you will, of the elf and orc races. Completely inverted them. But it's not just now the elves are green and ugly, and the orcs are thin and wayfish. The immortality that the elves have affects them. An orc being short-lived and aggressive is much different from an elf being long-lived and aggressive. And in the same way, an elf being long-lived and living alongside the trees in harmony with nature is very, very different from a short-lived orc living alongside the trees in harmony with nature. It dramatically changes the dynamics, and it's a very simple change to do so. And that's why the Valinor are some of the best. I digress, though. Let's talk more about the drow. Giants are actually a ancient race. They built the first civilization on Eberron, on Zendrik. They then enslaved a bunch of the elves, which includes the drow. The giants then left. They found dragons. They found the homeland. And eventually uh, learned magic of all things. They taught the elves the magic, and then this eventually led to a uh, quite a few things, just 
whole bunch of wars and everything. But eventually, this led to the Elven Slave Revolt. This destroyed the empires of the giants, and this is why elves now have the, have the run of it. Um, Zendrik got kind of ruckused in this, naturally. A lot of elves went to Arnale, which gave us the name Arnale Elves, naturally. And usually only the drow are crazy enough to live there, I would say. The island, well, the continent really is now more jungle and desert than anything else. There's a little bit of ice, which is nice and friendly. But there's also a lot, a lot of ruins, naturally. Ancient elven and giant civilization ruins. As previously mentioned, the drow originate on a continent called Zendrik, or possibly Zendrik. The drow, so dark skin, white hair, you know. Some of them have more gray skin. Um, they're a little bit more obviously inhuman than those of the Forgotten Realms. And they have the correct opinion, I would say, that they are truly the ones who preserve the dignity and valor of the elves. Not knowing anything about Eberron, I would say, they're probably right. So there's a few other cultural or ethnic splits of them, but most of them live on an area called Zendrik, as I mentioned. It's a continent on the planet Eberron takes place in. The Eberron drow are typically nomadic, although they often do live in an area called Kyber. Kyber is actually just the name for the Underdark. It's kind of weird. See, in Eberron, the world is actually made of three giant dragons who have all mushed together. One is Eberron itself. One is the Underdark, uh, the underground dragon, which surrounds uh, the core of the planet. That's Kyber. And Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Eberron lore is sometimes kind of hard to TLDR. They worship a scorpion god named Vulkuhur. This, by the way, is uh, why Eberron Drow do not have a spider theme, but instead have more of a scorpion theme. In addition, um, they don't have as much of a feminist supremacy, I suppose, since Vulkur is a male. Gods in Eberron have a few interpretations about them. The three for Volkor, there aren't always three, but the three that Volkor has listed on his Wikipedia page are the Hunter, the Wrathful, and the Cunning. The Cunning is more traditional drow stuff. The Hunter is very, very nomadic, but benefits more of a ranger, and I honestly can't think of any male drow rangers off the top of my head, so I'm not sure who worships him. And then there's the Wrathful, which is a little more like Loth, but meh. Nah. The Blood Hunters apparently uh, favor Dr Volko the Cunning. Volko is also the creator of Skorau, Skoro, who are those things we talked about back in that episode about Driders. As I mentioned then, and as I will mention now, Skoro are technically aberrations. They're drow with scorpions coming out of their bodies, or scorpions with drow emerging from them. However, instead of being a horrible amalgam, they are instead a honored religious icon. Skoro are a true breeding race, which means that they can have children in and of themselves. This is something that actually sets them apart from the Driders. Driders are sexless abominations. Skoro are based off of this old myth wherein they were giant slayers and then killed by a scorpion. But then Volkor was like, hey, you guys are cool, get in. So, you know. In conclusion, these drow are a lot hotter, and I know that because I'm a lot hotter. God, I'm sweating in this thing. Unfortunately, these are the only art assets I have, so I cannot take off my shirt. Also, it would reveal all my tattoos, and that's just not cool. Anyway, the drow are cool no matter what universe they're in. 
Anyway, I guess I'll be hopping to another dimension now to facilitate my curse. Um, thanks for listening to me ramble about the Eberron Drow for a few moments. I'll see you guys next time. I've been here, Eth, and stay sweaty, y'all. <laughs>